Uh, I was going to say good morning. Um, yeah. Well, welcome. I, I, uh, I apologize. I'm a bit tired yet. Uh, your, your brain gets stretched a long way. Uh, your, your willpower gets stretched a long way to, to get over the finish line. But uh, uh, I'm, I'm happy with the work that we did for divided government. Uh, in the end, uh, you just you don't get everything you want, but you try to make sure you get the things done that you need to get done. And it feels like that happened. And so now we still have a lot of work in front of us. Uh, this was just getting the targets uh, so that the, the committees can work through it. Uh, we picked a few high-level things that we agreed to or, and, and some that we just wouldn't agree to. Uh, but in the end, the chairs are now working, and we're going to see if we can get this done and get done Thursday. Time will tell. How confident are you? Time will tell. Doesn't sound well, like it's I, a I'm sure thing. Get down. The, the challenges are some, the, the biggest ones, Health and Human Services is just a giant bill with so many different policy provisions and even how we fund uh, the, whole, the whole bill is, is difficult. And so uh, the, the chairs and the commissioner are working and that's, that's the one I just don't know about. The rest of them I think we can get done. And well, sorry, what, can happen, I... what happens if the conference committees don't close up by 5 o'clock? What is the mechanism uh, for setting up the working groups, and will those be public? So the, the, if, if they're not done by uh, 5 o'clock, uh, some of the issues that uh, did not get done get kicked up. Mm -hmm. That means the governor, myself, uh, and the speaker, and our teams will try to work through and see if we can get there. Uh, that it just like coming together with the numbers, the policies is is kind of the same thing. It's sometimes we're just a long ways apart, and eventually you just have to jump to the middle. And so that's not easy for people to do. Nobody likes to do it, uh, but that's that's what has to happen. Is that going to happen with nursing home cuts? Is that going to get kicked I, up to I, leadership? We're, and should it? No, I don't. We're we're very passionate about keeping the nursing home rates where they're at. Um, they propose that as a, a way to reduce spending. As, uh, the commissioner uh, has a perspective uh, that uh, that we just don't share, and so that certainly that's one of the holdbacks. But uh, you know, time will tell. But we really think uh, what I said is I my commissioners or not my I'm sorry my my chairs uh, Abler and uh, Benson. I said if if you can convince them, then then we can have a conversation. But uh, we'll see. But, but it's issues just like that. I mean, there's there's probably a hundred of them that they're struggling with. Are you still committed to getting the full six million dollars of HAVA money through the end of this session? Yes. What response have you received from your caucus on the 1.8 percent provider tax? Well, they weren't happy. I mean, that's uh, uh, you know that was the 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 thing that I had to accept. Uh, you know, in the end, we both the governor, myself, and the speaker kind of looked at each other and as if, if we're not careful, we could lead us into a place that would be really bad for Minnesota. And so there's no gas tax and the provider tax uh, remains. And so it is 10% less than what it presently is, but uh, it was a big deal, a big gift for us that that's ongoing. Uh, we wanted it to go away. Uh, we hope to structure it a little bit different so that there's the things that are paid out of it uh, actually align with what it should be. Uh, meaning there's not going to we don't want it to be used as a slush fund both sides have taken big chunks of money out of that and that was one of our reasons we wanted it to go away and so I, I think it'll be better than it was given that dissent in your caucus on the provider tax will you need to take senate M minority leader Bach up on his offer to help you <laughs> count to 34 with his caucus to get the tax bill over the finish line yeah both both uh, Representative Hortman and myself will have that same issue. Uh, you know, each of us will have a group of, of uh, legislators that just don't want to do what we decided to do. Those are the conversations that I'm having with all of my senators now. Uh, my hope is that we have enough people. Um, you know, and I also hope the way the bills look, I, I think most of the bills, uh, both sides will have a number of people that vote for them. They're, they're good bills. So. As a greater Minnesota legislator, how did Greater Minnesota do out of this? Uh, I think fair. Um, you know, there's uh, it, it wasn't the main lens I was looking through. I was just trying to look through what was best for Minnesota. So I, I uh, to be honest, haven't even thought about that yet. The tax bill uh, is is yet to be determined. Uh, two key pe uh, provisions are, well, one really, really big one that I highlighted was the middle class uh, tax cut. Uh, I think both sides will take credit for that, and I'm fine with that. It's a win for Minnesota. Um, you know, so then we're working through a number of the other issues, county program aid, local government aid, uh, working family credit. So there's other issues that we got to figure out, but uh, I th we'll get there. 
So is that the leaders are working through those, or is that the... That's the chairs okay. and the commissioner. Senator, it doesn't appear that these committees are really all that transparent, at least today they have not been. We hear deals are being made on higher ed and other issues. At least the speaker yesterday said, this is going to now be all open, y'all get to watch. Is that yeah. happening? Uh, in some places it's happening, in other places it's not. It's, it's just, it's, it's, it's harder than you can imagine. Um, but we, imagine. we try, <laughs> yeah, you can imagine. Uh, you get goosebumps. Yeah. But, <laughs> but inside joke. Anyway, um, it, get a little rammy when you're tired and whatever. But uh, it's, um, we, we want to be as transparent as you can. And every time we say, what can we do to make it more transparent? Uh, I think Hortman in some ways led the way and actually said, let's do some of these, these uh, deadlines earlier. That really did help us. I mean, we've got, we had the, the budget bills passed both sides, so we had a lot of chance to uh, look at each other's information. And, and so even though we didn't get targets right away, uh, we still moved the ball uh, in some ways quicker. But, but then you come back to the very, very end when it's, it's psychology. It's how do we get to the end, and, and how do you ask somebody to dare to give up something that uh, somebody around them might say is terrible. And so that's the part that's so difficult. We thought if we set that deadline early and, and agreed that that would get us to the point of setting the targets, um, we, we tried to make what we considered bold moves to get there on Tuesday night, but somehow we were sort of at the same place. So. Senator, Senator, I was just talking to Senator Chamberlain out at the food trucks where most good intel comes from uh, on nice days. Uh, he said it would be very difficult to finish the tax bill by 5 o'clock today, and even more difficult to finish this whole thing by Thursday. Uh, do you agree that is an ambitious schedule? Th well, Thursday is ambitious, but not impossible. I'm kind of thinking about last year where we uh, it sort of felt like it was the same way. Uh, but like I said, the governor and the speaker and I have not talked about you know where we're at. Does it look like we can do it Thursday? Point is, we want to wrap up all the bills and really have them done and then there's the work of putting them together that still takes a days and days and days. So uh, I know we're close, and I'm glad we've made a deal, uh, and I'm glad we're going to be done before June. I hope it's Thursday. How, how worried are you about springing your members for the weekend where they're going to go home and probably be badgered by their constituents about things they don't like in this deal? That's part of the reason we wanted to get it done early. It doesn't matter whether you're Democrat or Republican. There are going to be people that are just not happy that you didn't do what they expected you to do. Um, and that's the nature of divided government. Uh, things collide and things have to go. And so, yeah, that, that is a concern. Um, I think both sides would say that's a concern. Have you discussed with Leader Doubt yet to get him in, li in line with whatever you, did, you decide on for special session? Yeah, so I, I called the governor before I talked to the press and just, or, I'm sorry. <laughs> like I said, I'm tired. You got to give me a little break here. But I called the speaker before we uh, uh, talked to the. Did I get it right this time? No. <laughs> hey, why, why do you think I didn't do a walkthrough? I said, I'm not, I'm not walking through. I'm, I'm, yeah, I called somebody who called a friend. I called Kurt Dowd uh, before the press conference. I thought that was, it was the proper place to have the conversation. And, and really, his, his, his own person and the, the GOP House, uh, they, they, even though we align, uh, they have an agenda that's not exactly the same as ours. And so, it's, I really said it's, it's up to the, the speaker uh, to get the votes in the House, just like it's my job in the Senate. And how are you doing in the Senate? Is Minority Leader Bach on board with any rule suspension, putting up votes for a bonding bill? How are you two doing? So uh, Senator Bach and I have not talked about that specifically. Um, you know, we do have conversations. Um, um, the bonding bill is always interesting. We have conversations seemingly right at the last hour. Uh, so we'll just have to see how that one plays out. But uh, we have good communication in the Senate. I, you know, I, I ha I'll listen to him. We'll see where, see where we go. But um, I think he wants to get done, too. Are you concerned not bringing minority leaders in at the, to sign off on a deal was a mistake? Because that typically has been done in the past. Uh, so that's why I circled back to we, we both agreed to circle back to our uh, so for me, for, to Kurt Dowd and for uh, Hortman to Bach just to talk about what we did. Um, it, you know, in some ways, it's a good sign that we were actually able to figure out how to do it uh, without needing the extra votes uh, in divided government. And so uh, you know, I, I can't imagine, you know, this is really the governor leading the way. I can't imagine that Bach would say, I'm not going to do that. But, you know, it's not any intention not to communicate with uh, Bach. And, 
you know, there was a, it, it was very crazy at the end, you know, and I, I apologize once, I'll apologize again, uh, just trying to make everything happen and things flying everywhere and trying to make decisions. Uh, um, it's, it was very, very difficult, and so, you know, just trying to make sure we're communicating to everybody is, is uh, I think I'll get better. I think I'm better than I was two, two years ago, and hopefully I'll get another shot at this. So. You said you'd kick some things upstairs. Is that, do you expect that the conference committee is what, and you're upstairs. Do you, do you think that's going to happen right away, or just when they're trying to wrap things up? In other I, words, I are you going to be yet. meeting with... Speaker yeah. and Governor now. Like uh, we're we're all we're feeling our way through this. Uh, they've never done it before. I've only done it once, and so uh, we'll see. Did you say anything big enough that it might derail this agreement? I, I don't think so. I think we think it's too important to, for Minnesota that we get it done. So. Anybody done higher education, for example, has been on the schedule? Uh, I know it's wrapped up sometime. <laughs> so uh, that's that's a bill that I would love to get done uh, before session ends, official session. Bill too. Uh, I'm not sure yet. Senator, can you talk a little bit more about uh, tax conformity? Uh, do we know exactly what that means in this tax bill and how that's going to affect uh, Minnesota taxpayers? So uh, there's not complete cl clarity there. We, you know, but because we can conform to a lot, I think we agree to conform to uh, provisions that would bring in about 800 million dollars of money. And so the agreement that we made between the House, Senate, and Governor is that goes back out. In other words, it's not going to raise taxes. Uh, the tax bills are, the target is zero. Um, they have some things that they would like, uh, and we have some things that we think are important. In the end, that's, that's where we'll have to get to. Why was an income tax cut so important to you? Uh, the, it became perhaps your signature issue. Well, we, we just felt like as the middle class was the one that seems to always be getting left out, and this was uh, an attempt to, to make that statement that for the first time in, I think, a couple decades, we actually lowered that tax bracket. Uh, the second thing about it is that was the big chunk of where we were conforming where the money was coming from, for, from those individuals, so we wanted to send it back to them in the form of a, a tax bracket reduction. How difficult was it to give up the sunset provision on the health care provider tax? Well, I, I mean, that was one of the most difficult thing, maybe the most difficult thing, uh, because in 2011, we, that was the compromise uh, to, to uh, end the, the shutdown, was that this would sunset eight years later, uh, and, and then to bring it back and not have a sunset was, was yeah, that was, a, that was a big loss for our side. Did you need to do that in order to get rid of the transportation tax proposals? Was that the uh, trade-off? I can't tell you the deals. <laughs> But obviously, it's not there, and so I mean that you can infer whatever you want. But on the tax bill, so with the zero target, if they want extra money, like Governor Walz does on local government aid, they're going to have to give something up. That's yeah, I, I think both sides do. I mean that, okay. that's the nature of what we're doing. Is there a deal on the uh, historical society uh, budget? I haven't talked to anybody working on it yet, so I know what you're talking about. I just don't know. Senator, do you think opioids uh, response bill will get done today? I know they're meeting again shortly. I, I sure hope it gets done. Uh, really, Senator Rosen needs to talk about that, but we've given a long way um, on that one. It, it needs to get done. It's like HAVA. There shouldn't be any reason not to do it. Are bills like that ones that could come up in spatial session? Would you folks agree to that? Yeah, I would. A lot of times in the past, or maybe most of the time in recent years, all four leaders have had to sign off on an agenda. Yep. And you, promise you don't go beyond there. Is, can that happen this year since the minority leaders have not been involved? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I will only, you know, my job will be to work for the Senate and what we can do and communicate, but uh, typically that tradition uh, is there for a reason. You know, nobody wants to, the special session to be more than what it's supposed to be, so uh, that will be my commitment. Oh, so. so you would include nursing home? How difficult will the nursing home uh, cuts uh, the House uh, Republican Caucus is still upset about. What yeah, we have we've not agreed to nursing home cuts, and my my plan is at the end of the day there are no nursing home cuts. That's that's a big one for us. We just feel like we adjusted those uh, reimbursement rates just a couple years ago. Uh, we have a large aging population population that's going to be needing long term care. We want to make sure that they're in a good spot, and so we'll fight for that one. We think that one's really important. For as much as you guys were cheering yourselves last night, 
There are at least, been at least a dozen items here where you say, I don't know, still to be worked out. You're far from out of the woods, aren't you? No, uh, most of these are going to be worked out within the conference committees. And, and typically at this state, I mean, two years ago, I think 100 things came up that we had to make a decision on. I'm doing those right now. But no, right now I'm here for you. On the bonding, <laughs> on the bonding you do need a supermajority, though. Yes. Those are, those are GO bonds. Yep, that's correct. How often, Mr. Carr, are you the will be a bonding bill. Well, uh, the Senate, I'm pretty sure, will have a bonding bill, and I, I think the House will too. The, on the bonding bill, my hope is that we focus on uh, higher ed, wastewater infrastructure, roads and bridges, just major bread and butter issues. It's pretty hard to say no to those. Uh, uh, we think that, you know, but I, I can't speak for the House. Senator Gazelka, it doesn't look as though the, the Public Safety Judiciary Committee is actually scheduled to meet even to the call of the chair. Are you concerned that they are frozen in place and may not make deadline here? Really, I, it's, it's all the policy. I and mean, when you're running out of time, that's the stuff that often gets jettisoned. I have not talked to uh, the chair on our side uh, yet today. He so, told me that he's not going to move until they've got the firm budget agreements between both chairs, and I don't know where it's at right now. Okay, I'll follow up. No. All right, uh, well, thank you so much. Uh, so we'll uh, stay tuned. Thanks.